Good morning and welcome to Daily Devotions with Vicar Brandon in for Pastor Steve as we continue our walk through the book of Exodus, seeing God's rescue of his people from slavery in Egypt. And now as God is establishing this covenant with his people, this set of laws and the way in which they are to go about their worship of him. And as they go about their worship with him, God's going to give some regulations and instructions as to how they should form the different items that are going to be used in worship. And so we're going to get into some of the detail that God lays out for his people, starting with some regulations for Sabbath worship, but also more regulations into how they should form the different items that they are using in their worship. So let's get into chapter 35. Moses assembled the whole Israelite community and said to them, These are the things the Lord had commanded you to do. For six days work is to be done, but the seventh day shall be your holy day, a Sabbath of rest to the Lord. Whoever does any work on it must be put to death. Do not light a fire in any of your dwellings on the Sabbath day. Again, God who created the earth in six days rested on day seven gives them a pattern to follow, telling them to use this seventh day to rest and to reflect on this rescue that he's done for them through uh, his deliverance of them up out of Egypt. Verse 4, Moses said to the whole Israelite community, This is what the Lord has commanded. From what you have, take an offering for the Lord. Everyone who is willing to bring it to the Lord, an offering of gold, silver, and bronze, blue, purple, and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, goat hair, ram skins dyed red, and hides of sea cows, acacia wood, olive oil for the light, spices for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense, and onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and breastpiece. All who are skilled among you are to come and make everything the Lord has commanded. The tabernacle with its tent and its covering, clasps, frames, crossbars, posts, and bases, the ark with its poles and the atonement cover and the curtain that shields it, the table with its poles and all its articles and the bread of the presence, the lampstand that is for light with its accessories, lamps and oil for the light, the altar of incense with its poles, the anointing oil and fragrant incense, the curtain for the doorway at the entrance of the temple, the altar of burnt offering with its bronze grating, its poles and all its utensils, the bronze basin with its stand, the curtains of the courtyard with its posts and bases, and the curtain for the entrance to the courtyard, the tent pegs for the tabernacle and for the courtyard, and their ropes, the woven garments worn for ministering in the sanctuary, both the sacred garments for Aaron, the priest, and the garments for his sons when they serve as priests. So a lot of different items that are mentioned here. And as we go through these next few chapters in Exodus, we're going to outline and see how these different things are to be made, how they're to be fashioned, and what they're to be used for. The point being that the worship of the God of Israel is a glorious thing. It's a thing to be done with reverence, as God is a holy and powerful God deserving of our utmost worship. And that's what's being communicated by the precision and the details that are laid out in the book of Exodus, that God deserves our worship, our wholehearted worship. And so verse 20, Then the whole Israelite community withdrew from Moses' presence, and everyone who was willing and whose heart moved him came and brought an offering to the Lord for the work on the tent of meeting, for its service, and for all the sacred and for the sacred garments. All who were willing, men and women alike, came and brought gold jewelry of all kinds, brooches, earrings, rings, and ornaments. They all presented their gold as a wave offering to the Lord. Everyone who had blue, purple, or scarlet yarn, or fine linen, or goat hair, ram skins dyed red, or hides of sea cows brought them. Those presenting an offering of silver or bronze brought it as an offering to the Lord, and everyone who had acacia wood for any part of the work brought it. Every skilled woman spun with her hands and brought what she had spun, blue, purple, or scarlet yarn or fine linen. And all the women who were willing and had the skill spun the goat hair. The leaders brought onyx stones and other gems to be mounted on the ephod and the breastpiece. 
They also brought spices and olive oil for light, and for the anointing oil, and for the fragrant incense. All the Israelite men and women who were willing brought to the Lord free will offerings for all the work the Lord through Moses had commanded them to do. And so we see as they're assembling some of these items, as they're getting ready to set up this tent of meeting, this place where God would come to meet his people, that all the people are involved in this giving of the different things that they have, this idea of being charitable, but also using uh, our gifts for the glory of God to assemble um, what is going to be used in his worship. Then Moses said to the Israelites, See, the Lord has chosen Bezalel, son of Uri, the son of Hur, from the tribe of Judah, and has filled him with the Spirit of God, with skill, ability, and knowledge in all kinds of crafts, to make artistic designs for work in gold, silver, and bronze, to cut and set stones, to work in wood, and to engage in all kinds of artistic craftsmanship. And he has given both him and Ohuliab, son of Esimach, of the tribe of Dan, the ability to teach others. He has filled them with skill to do all kinds of work as craftsmen, designers, embroiderers in blue, purple and scarlet yarn, and fine linen, and weavers, all of them master craftsmen and designers. Interesting that these two men are mentioned, and they're mentioned that God has given them the gift of the Holy Spirit. God the Holy Spirit is working in these men to do what? To make these items of worship. That God can use all of our talents for his purpose. We think of these guys who are good at, they're craftsmen, they're good with working with all these different sorts of items, but they're using their talents for the glory of God. And we see people bringing their treasures to God, we see people donating their time to God, and we see these people using whatever talents they have in order to worship this God of holiness and this God of majesty. And so that's the principle that we get to see in worship that Exodus shows us, that in worship we come before a holy and powerful God, and yet he comes to meet us. That's what the tent of meeting was all about, that God would dwell with his people. We still celebrate that today in worship as we reverently go before our God. We are able to come before him because of what Jesus has done. That God promises to meet us in his gifts in worship. That he washes us clean in the waters of baptism. That he gives us the true body and true blood of his son in the Lord's Supper. And that he calls us to repentance and gives us the forgiveness of sins through the preaching of his word and that proclamation of the gospel. God continues to meet us in worship, and we're called to worship him reverently. We're called to acknowledge his holiness and to use our time, our talents, and our treasures to be totally devoted to him and to worship him in spirit and in truth. God bless you, and have a great day.